According to feelings are in danger of becoming emotionally addicted. But there's an answer to it. Let's look at Psalm 131. There's three verses in this psalm. And they all say something really, really wonderful. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in matters too great or in things too wonderful for me. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul. Like a weaned child with his mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me ceased from fretting. <laughs> oh Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. We need to have some depth in our life. We need to live deeper and not be so shallow. The Lord had the audacity to tell me years ago that I was a shallow person. And I didn't quite know what he meant. And so he took me to some new levels spiritually. And one of the scriptures that he led me to was in Luke chapter... Five, I believe it is. Luke chapter 5, the first six verses. How many of you don't want to be led around by your emotions all the time? You don't want to be controlled by how you feel? Okay, and I want to make sure you understand this. You, you will feel things, but if you stop letting them control you, you're going to feel them less and less and less. You may have a tadpole show up every once in a while, but it doesn't have to become a frog. Luke 5 verse 1, Now it occurred that while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the message of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the Sea of Galilee. And he saw two boats drawn up by the lake, but the fishermen had gone down from them and were washing their nets. And getting into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon Peter, he requested him to draw away a little bit from the shore and he sat down there and continued to teach the crowd of people from the boat. I suppose if he would have stayed close to the shore, the people would have gotten the boat with him. And so he had him draw away a little bit from the shore. And he sat there and he taught the people. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a haul. Put out into the deep water. If we're living shallow lives, we never get the hall of blessings that we want in our lives. <laughs> we never get them when we're, everything is shallow. And Peter said to him, and I love these verses. These just really taught me a lot years ago. Peter answered him, Master, we toiled all night. We are exhausted. Notice he's telling him how he feels. And we didn't catch a thing. But on the ground of your word, I will lower the net again. Now, what Peter did was he told Jesus how he felt, what he wanted, and what he thought. I don't think this is going to work. We've already been fishing all night. We didn't catch anything. We're exhausted. Don't feel like doing this. Don't really want to. But because you said to, doesn't matter if I want to or feel like it or think it's a good idea. I'll just do it because you said to do it. Now, that's when he stepped over from being shallow to having some depth in his life. Going deeper means that we stop living by how we feel. We own those feelings and we say, I have them, but they're not going to have me. It means that we know the Word of God and we can judge when what we're thinking lines up with the Word of God and when it's just a bunch of garbage being put in our mind from the enemy. Are you with me or am I telling you too much that so you can't get it? We, we have no understanding of what's right or wrong if we don't study the Word. How am I going to know when my thoughts are right or wrong if I don't know God's Word? We don't know that. That's how Satan deceives us because, as Dave says, it's through ignorance. We have to be educated in the Word of God. We must believe that this is the only truth that exists. Well, how do you know that the Bible is truth? Aren't there many truths? Well, how could there be many truths and it be truth? Amen? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. 
And I know there's a lot of people in the world that don't want to believe this, but do you know why they don't want to believe it? Because they want to do what they want to do when they want to do it. All the people who claim not to believe in God, if they thought that they could believe in God and still do anything they wanted to, they would believe in God quickly. It's all about self-will. But if you know the Word of God, then no matter how you feel or what you think or what you want, you can go deeper. Come on, you can go deeper. You can say, I'm deeper than this. I've got some depth in my life now. Is there anybody here that's ready to go deeper? You know what? I can teach you this and pray for God's anointing to be on it so you can understand it. But let me tell you something. Only you can go home and do it. You can't do it without God's help. If you have some strong feeling about something and you know God is wanting you not to go with how you feel, don't you dare just try. You say, God, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, God. If you help me, I'm willing. And don't give up when it's a little bit difficult. Do not be weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall faint. You shall reap if you faint not. <laughs> Yes, in due season, you're going to faint. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shallow Christians are not happy Christians. Everything is based on how they feel. I feel, I feel, I don't feel, I feel, I feel, I don't feel. Look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 8. He'll give us beauty for ashes. Man, my feelings were out of whack because I'd been wounded. And it's almost shocking now how stable I am. And I mean, it took a while, boy. Yes, now I'm dangerous. <laughs> Perfect. In case you didn't hear her, she said, how long did it take? <laughs> well, long time, I hate to say. <laughs> you know what? God changes us from glory to glory, little by little. And you get progress all along the way. And here's, here's something that will help you. Learn to enjoy the progress you've got. And don't just keep focusing on everything that still needs to be done. Because God is not mad at you. He loves you. This is for you. You know, God loved me just as much when I was an emotional mess, but I wasn't as happy. And I wasn't as good of a witness. God loves you just as much. You don't have to be mad at yourself. You don't have to think that God's mad at you. But it's going to take some time. I'm not going to lie to you. But I do believe this. I believe that if you have the right kind of teaching, I believe that it doesn't have to take as long as it did for me because you know what? Nobody was telling me this stuff. I didn't have anybody telling me the stuff that I tell you. I had to find this out through many tears and much agony. And finally started going back and reading books from the 16th and 17th century and found out that faith didn't always get me what I wanted, that sometimes it took me through the things that I didn't want and that God expected me to be stable. Amen? Amen? I came into the Word and Faith movement back in the 70s and got a lot of great teaching about faith, but got a little out of balance thinking that I could use my faith to never have a problem. And that just doesn't work. There's a faith to believe God for something, and if you don't get it, then there's a higher faith that will take you through something. <laughs> Did you hear me? I said there's a faith that you can believe God for something, but if you don't get it, then you got to believe that God's got something deeper in mind, something better in mind, and maybe what you don't need is that thing you want, 
Maybe it's not that promotion at work that's going to help you spiritually. Maybe it's not getting married right now that's going to help you spiritually. Maybe it's not getting rid of that problem right this minute that's going to help you spiritually. Maybe God knows that you need to walk it out a little bit. You need to wait a little while longer. You need to be a little more patient because He's much more interested in changing you than He is your circumstances. That's going a little deeper. That's what it means to go a little deeper. You need to make your mind up tonight, God, I don't care how long it takes, I am never going to give up. I am not going to quit and I am not going to give up. Yes, I hope we get all of our breakthroughs fast, but only if that's the perfect will of God. Don't pray for your timing, pray for God's timing. Your will be done, God, in earth as it is in heaven. I pray that every day now, I tell you that Lord's Prayer is valuable. Give us this day our daily bread. I'm not going to worry about the next day. Just take care of me today, Lord. <laughs> forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Your will be done on earth even as it is in heaven. Amen? I want your will, God, not mine. I want to be a person with some depth. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 8, I love this. It says, by this the Holy Spirit points out that the way into the true holy of holies is not yet thrown open as long as the farmer or the outer portion of the tabernacle remains a recognized institution and is still standing. So here's what I got out of this. Not taking it out of context, but this is what God showed me. If you look at yourself as the tabernacle, because the Bible does say that we are now the tabernacle of God. We are the house of God and He lives in us. And just like that Old Testament tabernacle had three parts, we also have three parts. We have a spirit, the holiest place of all where God dwells. We have a soul, which would be more like the holy place, but not the holy of holies. And then we have the flesh, which is like the outer court. And he says the way into the holy of holies, the deepest place, is not thrown open until the outer portion of the tabernacle is no longer recognized as an institution. So what I get out of this is as long as I'm going to let this outer man control me, then I'm never going to enjoy the glories of really living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit with God. I've got to stop paying attention to this outer man if I'm going to go deeper and live in the inner man. Not too much for you, is it? Tabernacle, three parts, outer, inner, holy, I, yeah, you lost me. Well, see, if I lost you, then it only means that there's a lot you don't know and you need to find out. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, one God, three persons. Joyce, one person, three parts. Spirit, soul, body, spirit, the deepest part. And you know what, really? Our real life is the life in us. It's not the life around us. It's the life in us. When you've got enough of the right stuff going on on the inside, the stuff going on around you is not that big of a deal. That doesn't mean you enjoy it and clap for it, but you can make it through it and still have a good life. Amen? Psalm 1, 1 says, do not take counsel from the ungodly. And our emotions are probably one of the most ungodly things that we can ever take advice from. How many of you tend to be a little too emotional? Let's see some truth out there. Okay. Who's gotten themselves in great trouble following their feelings? All right. Well, my, my, it looks like I got the right crowd for the right message. For the right time. Romans 8.8. 8. I'll tell you something that I is the most valuable thing that I have is what I know. What I know in the Word of God. And that is the most valuable thing for you. The time that you're spending here tonight is a valuable way to spend time. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, catering 
to the appetites and impulses. We're talking about emotional impulses, the danger of following impulses. Those who are catering to the appetites and impulses of their carnal nature cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable unto Him. Now, that doesn't mean that God rejects you. It just means that behavior cannot be acceptable to God because He knows it's not going to bring the blessings that we want in our life. We don't have to live that way. You watch people eat impulsively. I was in a, in a furniture store one day buying some furniture and there was a plate full of cookies there. Now, I don't know why there needs to be cookies in the furniture store, but there they were. <laughs> one of the shoe stores I go to, they have a big jar of cookies. It's like I came to get shoes. And every time I go, they say, do you want some cookies? No, I don't want any cookies. Would you like to take some cookies home? No, I would not like to take any cookies home. Well, Joyce, why didn't you want the cookies? Because if I eat the cookies, my pants won't fit me. <laughs> and it's more important to me that my pants fit me than that I eat the cookies. We pay a high price for that momentary little taste bud zing. So I was in that store for a little while, not very long, and I walked back by the plate of cookies and the whole plate of cookies was gone. And I can tell you, I would guarantee that everybody who walked by there impulsively took a cookie and ate it and didn't even remember eating it later. <laughs> now look at me, you need to start doing some things on purpose, not impulsively. If you're going to eat, then realize what you're eating, know what's in it, and don't eat it if you really don't want to eat it. Don't buy things impulsively. Don't go out to the mall to pick up your glasses that you ordered last week and end up going home with three trunk loads full of stuff because they had a 75% off sale. <laughs> and now you've got all this stuff at home. And now, have, have you ever taken a bunch of stuff home and then gotten aggravated because you had to unpack it? Now I gotta unpack all this stuff. I wish I wouldn't have even bought it. <laughs> have you ever bought something because it was pretty for your house and got home, couldn't find a place to put it? <laughs> uh-huh. I used to buy, I used I like earrings, and so I can remember buying like this real pretty unique pair of earrings. Didn't have anything to wear with it. Kept them for three years, gave them away, never had them on one time. You can't just get something because it's cute or shiny or pretty. We need to think. Do I have something to do with this? Do I have something to wear with this? Do I really want this? Do I want to get the bill? See, when you cater, when you go to a catered event, it's a lot of fun to sit there and be waited on. Bring me this, bring me that, bring me this, bring me that. But lo and behold, then the bill comes. That's what happens when we cater to our flesh sooner or later. The bill comes. The cookies show up somewhere. <laughs> All right, let me just share one last scripture with you about impulses. And I love this one. John chapter 21. I'm urging you not to do things impulsively, but to think. Stop and think. Pastor Mike that's been up here helping me a little bit with some of the things before the service. I've noticed that some things I ask him, he'll answer me right away. And then some things I ask him and he, he wants to think about it for a minute. And then I asked him something yesterday and he even said, you know what? I'm not really qualified to answer that question. Now there's a man with some depth. See, a lot of people just, you ask them something, well, let me tell you what I think. Now, you didn't have an, even any clue what you're talking about. We need to wait just a little bit when somebody asks us a question and see if we know enough to even try to answer them. And if not, just say, I'm not really qualified to answer that. John chapter 21, Jesus 
appeared to his disciples after his resurrection. Beginning in verse 1, it says, After this, Jesus let himself be seen and revealed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he did it in this way. There were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas, called the twin, and Nathaniel from Cana of Galilee, also the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. And Simon Peter said to them, now just get this picture. I am going fishing! Exclamation mark. <laughs> Kind of like emphatic. I, I just get this picture that they were all sitting around and he just jumped up and said, I'm going fishing. And they said, we're coming with you. Another exclamation mark. Now, you know, Jesus had died and been resurrected. And I guess they didn't know what else to do with themselves. And so emotionally, I guess Peter just thought, well, I'll just go back to fishing. That's what I used to do. I'll just go do that. So they went out and got into the boat, and throughout the night they caught nothing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> they caught nothing <laughs> from their emotional decision. They caught nothing. Are you with me? They caught nothing. The disciples fished all night, exhausted. They caught nothing because they were not fishing in deep enough water. <laughs> now these guys are on the surface, making emotional decisions, and they caught nothing. Now watch this. Verse 4, morning was breaking when Jesus came to the beach, and he stood there. However, the disciples did not even know that it was Jesus. And I want you to watch verse 5. This says so much. So Jesus said to them, boys, children, he didn't say men. He didn't say disciples. He called them according to what their behavior was. Boys, children, do you have any meat? Do you have any fish? Have you caught anything to eat along with your bread? <laughs> what was he saying? Is this doing you any good? Is this working? No, they said. And he said, well, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you're going to find some. <laughs> so maybe some of you are frustrated in your life because you've made your own decisions and you've got your net cast on the wrong side of the boat. Maybe you've decided what you want to do with your life and you're just off trying to do it. Maybe you've decided where you want to work and you're just off doing it. You hate the job, you don't like it. It's not even really what you're called to do, but you make good money there, and after all, we know money's everything. Some of you that hate what you're doing in life, why don't you take a bold step of faith and start doing something you would enjoy, even if maybe it doesn't provide enough dollars. Maybe you'd be better off to change your lifestyle a little, a little bit and be really happy in doing what you're doing. Don't get emotional and marry the wrong person just because you're afraid you'll never have anybody. You'd be better off to spend more years by yourself than to be locked up with somebody that you can't stand. Amen? Stop buying stuff you can't pay for, then you're not going to have to cringe every time the phone rings wondering if it's a bill payer, bill collector start fishing on the right side of the boat. You know, true freedom is not getting everything you want, but it's being able to be joyful and emotionally stable even when you don't get what you want. But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. 
Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, it talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and, you know, taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, as we travel around the world, we meet so many wonderful children that have had such desperate need in their life. And we're so grateful to be able to help them. Today, we happen to be in Thailand. And this little boy's name is Somded. And he's had some tragic things in his life, but thank God, through your help, he's now living in the children's home here, and his life is looking very bright. His parents both died when he was six in an auto accident. And when they found him to bring him here to the home, he had had severe ear infections, which had caused hearing loss and lots of other problems in his ears. So he's had about two years of medical treatment on his ears, and thank God he can hear fine now. And so thank you for helping us provide homes for some dead and for other little boys and girls like him all around the world. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand.